Welcome to part four of this year's Hurricane Week 2012, where we're covering the top 100 storms from around the world. This Today we cover 40 to 21. Storm 40 is a typhoon come cyclone that initially formed in the West Pacific, but crossed over into the Indian Ocean and subsequently hit India as a Category 5 storm. Forming on the first day of November 1989, this was Typhoon Gay. Gay formed to the east of Malaysia and eventually became a typhoon and then a rather intense Category 3 storm when it struck Thailand and then crossed over into the Indian Ocean maintaining typhoon status. Slowly intensifying, Gay passed over the Andaman Islands and then went on to develop into a Category 5 cyclone upon striking the Indian coast near Kavali. Heavy rains caused widespread disruption in terms of communications and elect electricity supplies in Thailand with many structures washed away. Wind gusts of 200 miles per hour battered the Indian coast, damaging many thousands of buildings either due to flooding or its winds. At 39 is a typhoon that was responsible for over $13 billion of damage in the Philippines and Vietnam. Almost reaching Category 5 status, Super Typhoon Durian killed around 1,500 people during its early December rampage in 2006. Durian formed to the south of Guam and progressed west-northwestward. Durian began to intensify as it approached the Philippines and eventually became a high-end Category 4 storm as it swept through the islands. Reaching a secondary peak over the South China Sea, Durian managed to reach typhoon intensity a third time just before making landfall in Vietnam. As a depression, Durian made a final landfall in Thailand. The storm caused widespread flooding and damage in the Philippines and heavy rains destroyed tens of thousands of buildings, with a final death toll near 1,500. Storm 38 was an Atlantic hurricane that killed thousands in Central America. Like Hurricane Joe Miriam, covered earlier in the top 100, this storm crossed into the Pacific, merged and made a second landfall in Mexico. This storm was Fifi Orlean. Hurricane Fifi started as a tropical depression to the southeast of Puerto Rico and reached tropical storm status close to the south coast of Jamaica. Fifi became a hurricane and as a Category 2 storm paralleled closely to the Honduran coast before making landfall in southern Belize. Fifi weakened to a depression over Mexico and eventually merged with a new storm in the Pacific, Orlean. Orlean became a hurricane and made landfall in Mexico as a Category 2 storm. Honduras reported immense amounts of rainfall that caused many mudslides in the country. Some towns were decimated and around 8,000 died overnight during the storm's passage. Hurricane Orlean caused little in the way of damages. At 37 was a monster Category 5 storm that formed in the West Pacific and struck the Kansai region of Japan with winds of 160 miles per hour. This storm was Typhoon Vera, known in Japan as the Esiwan Typhoon.
Vera formed in the Micronesia area and became a tropical storm slowly before travelling through the northern Mariana Islands. Quickly becoming a typhoon, Vera began to rapidly intensify and within a day was a Category 5 storm. Vera managed to maintain Category 5 intensity all the way to its landfall in Japan, making a second landfall in the northern part of the country before finally becoming extratropical. Vera caused a large storm surge coupling with its Category 5 winds which caused vast amounts of damage. Agricultural and structural damage was substantial, with several thousand dead and over a million left homeless by the storm. Storm 36 is another typhoon, this time one that is known to be one of the deadliest in the history of Hong Kong. With a death toll of 11,000, the Great Hong Kong Typhoon of 1937 hit the area with winds of over 125 miles per hour, though the actual wind speed will never be known. Not too much is known about the Hong Kong Typhoon, though judging by the wind speeds recorded, the storm probably caused widespread destruction in the region. A total of 11,000 fatalities were recorded, and damage likely amounted well into the millions. At 35 is another historic typhoon recording a minimum air pressure of around 877 millibars, one of the lowest ever recorded. This storm went on to strike Japan as a typhoon, killing over a thousand. This was Typhoon Ida of 1958. Tropical storm Ida formed near Guam and passed over the island shortly before becoming a typhoon. Ida quickly became a Category 3 storm, turned to the north and resumed strengthening after a couple of days. Reaching Category 5 status, Ida approached Japan but began to weaken and was a minimal typhoon upon landfall. Nonetheless, rains from the storm were unprecedented in some areas. Around 2,000 landslides and major flooding due to storm surge helped contribute to over 1,000 fatalities, several thousand buildings destroyed, and $50 million of damage at the time. Storm 34 was a cyclone that devastated the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh in November 1977. This storm struck as a high-end Category 3 storm and killed tens of thousands. This unnamed storm is best known as simply the Andhra Pradesh cyclone. This storm started out not too far from Indonesia and progressed west where it became a tropical storm. The storm then turned to the northwest where it continued to intensify and struck the Indian coast as a Category 3 storm. The cyclone washed away entire villages in the region, with many other buildings damaged due to the storm's strong winds. The storm claimed the lives of over 14,000, with some estimates claiming as many as 50,000. At 33 was an Atlantic hurricane that caused historic amounts of rain and flooding in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic and Haiti, killing thousands and causing billions of dollars of damage, especially with its eventual Florida landfall. This was Hurricane Jeanne in 2004. Xi'an formed shortly before passing through the Lesser Antilles, making landfall on Puerto Rico as a tropical storm and skimming the coast of the Dominican Republic as a hurricane. Briefly weakening to a depression near the border with Haiti, Xi'an slowly recovered and eventually re-attained hurricane status as it performed a slow and lengthy loop halfway between the Bahamas and Bermuda. Xi'an then travelled west past the northernmost Bahamas as a major hurricane and made landfall in Florida as a Category 3 storm. Heavy rainfall in Puerto Rico caused flooding and landslides, resulting in eight fatalities. Heavy rains then affected Haiti, resulting in severe rainfall and mudslides, which killed over 3,000. Flooding continued to occur in some areas of the United States, and many areas of Florida were without electricity for a time.
Storm 32 also featured in the 2004 Atlantic Hurricane season and is perhaps the most notable, fluctuating between Category 4 and Category 5 strength as it cruised through the Caribbean. This, of course, was Hurricane Ivan. Ivan formed to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands and proceeded west, eventually becoming a Category 4 storm in the Central Atlantic. Ivan weakened, then re-strengthened as it passed the Windward Islands, eventually becoming a Category 5 hurricane north of Venezuela. Weakening soon afterwards, Ivan approached and passed close to Jamaica, re-attaining Category 5 strength shortly afterwards. Ivan skimmed past the western tip of Cuba, then bore down on the United States Gulf Coast, making landfall as a Category 3 storm in Alabama. Ivan caused substantial damage in Grenada, with up to 85% of structures damaged or destroyed. Damages amounted well into the hundreds of millions in Jamaica too, where thousands of homes were rendered uninhabitable as a result of the storm's winds and flooding. The Cayman Islands also fared badly, causing long-lasting effects and nearly $2 billion of damage there alone. Extensive damage was recorded in Florida and Alabama due to Ivan's winds and surge. Other areas such as Georgia and North Carolina were hit by flooding. In total, damages from Ivan amounted to $18 billion. At 31 is another Atlantic hurricane that is well remembered in Cuba and Texas, Cuba for its cost and Texas for its storm surge and its flooding. The Turks and Caicos Islands also suffered with many buildings destroyed. This was Hurricane Ike of 2008. Ike formed in the open Atlantic and took a path generally taken by storms that curve out to sea. However, Ike curved towards the south and began to affect the Turks and Caicos Islands, before slamming into Cuba as a Category 4 storm. Ike maintained hurricane status as it crossed Cuba, intensifying into a Category 2 storm up until its landfall in Texas. Significant damage was reported in the Turks and Caicos Islands, with the majority of structures damaged to some extent. Cuba experienced flooding on a widespread scale, causing major agricultural damage. Catastrophic damage resulted along the Louisiana and Texas coasts due to Ike's storm surge. Ike caused nearly $30 billion of damage in the United States, with $7 billion of damage in Cuba as well.
Storm 30 was one of not many major hurricanes to strike New England, reaching Category 5 status in the open Atlantic. The storm curved northward into an eventual landfall on Long Island and then Connecticut. This was the New England hurricane of 1938. This storm formed near the Cape Verde Islands and brushed the southernmost islands before moving through the Atlantic. The storm reached hurricane status in the central Atlantic and continued to intensify, reaching major hurricane status to the north of the Lesser Antilles and Category 5 status as it made its closest approach to the Bahamas. The storm began to curve like many other storms do, but was then pushed further west and consequently into Long Island and then Connecticut as a Category 2 hurricane. Storm surge and wind damage caused substantial damage, with up to 800 fatalities and over $300 million of damage. At 29 is one of the three storms that moved over American shores as a Category 5 storm in the 20th century. Forming in the Western Caribbean, this storm hit the tip of Western Cuba before approaching the Gulf Coast as a formidable storm. This was Hurricane Camille. Camille formed near the Cayman Islands and quickly intensified into a major hurricane before striking Cuba. Camille moved onwards and continued to strengthen, reaching Category 5 status in the Gulf of Mexico. The storm then maintained its strength until landfall in Mississippi. Trees and power lines were downed in Cuba with five fatalities there. Camille completely decimated areas near where the storm made landfall and heavy damage and flooding were reported elsewhere, with the loss of electricity and some buildings on fire. Floods extended inland as far as Virginia, which was hit by significant flooding killing well over a hundred people. Damages from Camille amounted to nearly one and a half billion dollars. Storm 28 was a particularly long-lived and violent Atlantic hurricane that affected the Lesser and Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, Florida and Mexico, reaching major hurricane status three times along the way, responsible for over a thousand fatalities. This was Hurricane Inez. Inez formed in the central Atlantic and intensified into a major hurricane just before passing the Lesser Antilles. Inez remained strong and struck the Dominican Republic as a Category 4 storm, passing over Haiti and making landfall in Cuba as a Category 3 storm. Inez then slowed down and turned towards the northeast, weakening to a tropical storm between Cuba and Florida. Inez became a hurricane once more near the northern Bahamas and performed a U-turn, then impacting the southern tip of Florida and the Florida Keys. Inez began to intensify after leaving Florida and became a major hurricane just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. After grazing the coast, Inez moved west and struck Mexico as a Category 3 storm. Most of the damage was recorded in Guadeloupe, where agricultural damage was severe and some towns almost completely destroyed. However, most of the deaths occurred in Haiti and Mexico, amounting to well over a thousand in total. At 27 is an Atlantic storm that formed just the year after Inez and also went on to reach major hurricane status three times, the third of which it became a Category 5 storm and slammed into Mexico near the Texas border. This was Hurricane Beulah.
Beulah formed not too far east of Barbados and moved past the islands as a tropical depression. Slow movement to the northwest resulted in considerable damage reported in Martinique, even though Beulah was still weak. The storm began to intensify, becoming a Category 4 storm near Puerto Rico, then weakening as it interacted with the island of Hispaniola. Weakening to a tropical storm, Beulah curved to the south of Jamaica and became a hurricane once more in the Western Caribbean, making landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 2 storm. Once it emerged into the Gulf of Mexico, Beulah intensified again, becoming a Category 5 storm near the coast of Mexico and making landfall just south of the Texas border. Beulah left thousands homeless in Mexico due to the strong winds and storm surge, whilst in Texas, 115 tornadoes were reported from the storm, causing heavy damage in some areas. Storm 26 is another monstrous Category 5 storm in the Atlantic. This storm hit the Dominican Republic near peak intensity and affected much of the rest of the Eastern Caribbean. The storm eventually went on to parallel the Florida coast before striking Georgia. This was Hurricane David. David formed in the Central Atlantic and was already a Category 4 storm before arriving at the Lesser Antilles, passing near Dominica, before becoming a Category 5 storm right up until landfall over Santo Domingo. Weakening to a tropical storm, David passed the eastern tip of Cuba and then the Bahamas as a minimal hurricane, intensifying as it neared the Florida east coast. David weakened back to a Category 1 storm as it made landfall in Georgia. Only one in five buildings on the island of Dominica survived the storm unscathed, with most damaged or destroyed by strong winds, landslides and heavy rain. The majority of the population were homeless after the storm. Damage was also reported on neighbouring islands as well as Puerto Rico, but the worst of the storm was felt in the Dominican Republic. Extreme flooding washed away entire communities, as well as washing away roads and ravaging crops. 2,000 perished as a result of the storm there. Winds from David caused significant damage along the Florida coast and only minor damage further north, including where it made landfall in Georgia. A 25 is a storm that devastated Miami in 1926 when it hit the city as a Category 4 storm. This storm killed nearly 400 people, many of them unaware of the dangers of the storm. Adjusted for inflation, the Miami hurricane of 1926 will probably be the costliest on record. This storm formed in the Central Atlantic and became a hurricane several hundred miles east of the Leeward Islands. Becoming a major hurricane north of the Lesser Antilles, this storm progressed past the Turks and Caicos Islands and through the Bahamas to its Category 4 landfall in southern Florida. Maintaining Category 3 intensity after leaving Florida, the hurricane moved to the Gulf Coast, where it paralleled the coast whilst weakening from a Category 3 hurricane to a weak tropical storm by the time it reached Louisiana. The Miami area was greatly impacted, with many buildings destroyed. Many of the 372 deaths were thought to have resulted from people believing it was safe to go outside during the passage of the eye. Storm 24 is a major hurricane that struck New Orleans during the War of 1812. The storm caused heavy damage to the buildings and a lot of New Orleans was under many feet of flood water. This was the Louisiana hurricane of 1812. This storm was first recorded near Jamaica, probably crossing over Cuba at some point into the Gulf of Mexico, where the storm then headed for New Orleans, where it made landfall. Around 100 fatalities resulted, with $6 million of damage at the time.
At 23 was an intense hurricane that took South Florida by surprise, causing almost complete destruction in the Florida Keys. The storm made landfall with a central pressure of 892 millibars. This was the Labor Day hurricane of 1935. This storm formed far to the north of the Greater Antilles and moved through the Bahamas as a tropical storm. This storm became a hurricane near Andros Island, then a major hurricane north of Cuba, quickly attaining Category 5 intensity as it approached the Florida Keys. The storm passed just west of mainland Florida at peak intensity, beginning to weaken as it skimmed the coast. The upper keys were decimated, with most structures destroyed and all transport links severed, including the train line where an evacuation train derailed as a result of the storm. Storm number 22 was another powerful hurricane, this time in the eastern Pacific. After moving out to sea, this storm hooked northeastward and made a catastrophic Category 5 landfall on the Mexico coast near Manzanillo. This was the Mexico hurricane of 1959. The Mexico hurricane was first recorded south of Mexico with hurricane force winds, moving northwest and slowly closing in on the Mexican coast. However, the storm appeared to be curving out to sea, which it did briefly before making a sharp turn to the northeast, where it made landfall as a Category 5 storm. Many buildings in the landfall area were completely destroyed, with mudslides that claimed the lives of hundreds caused by heavy rains. Up to 1,800 were killed, making it the deadliest storm in the East Pacific. At 21 was a hurricane that made two landfalls in Mexico, mainly in the city of Monterey, where hundreds of buildings were flooded or destroyed. This Category 3 storm killed thousands in August 1909 and is known as the Monterey Hurricane. This storm formed to the east of the Lesser Antilles and passed very close to Guadeloupe as a Category 1 storm. The hurricane then made landfall in the Dominican Republic and Cuba, only strengthening once it moved back over sea. The storm then reached Category 3 strength before striking the Yucatan Peninsula, retaining that strength after exiting until its final landfall in Mexico. The area around Monterrey was worst affected, predominantly by the hurricane's rainfall, which caused major flooding, resulting in a death toll of up to 5,000. That's the end of Part 4 of the Top 100 Storms. Coming up is the secondary feature, a summary of all this year's Northern Hemisphere storms, this part covering the latest ones, October to November. First up we have Tropical Storm Gamey, which was a 65 mile per hour storm reaching a minimum pressure of 990 millibars. It was expected to be stronger but wasn't in the end, but it still managed to cause flooding over in the Philippines and made it to Vietnam where it made landfall as a tropical storm. Back in the Atlantic we had Tropical Storm Oscar which formed on October the 3rd and didn't last long, dissipating on October the 5th, being absorbed by a front. Now for Typhoon Prapiroon, which was a very strange storm in the fact that it... Well, look at the track. First of all, 115 miles per hour was the top wind speed. Didn't cause much in the way of damages, but was expected to at one point. Well, it could have done, but didn't in the end, luckily. Now Tropical Storm Olivia, which formed on October the 6th and became a tropical storm, reaching a peak wind speed of 60 miles per hour. Didn't do much though, as you can see there, dissipating on October the 9th. Now to Tropical Storm Patty, which was a very short-lived storm, um, hung around just northeast of the Bahamas from October the 11th to the 13th when it dissipated there. Now Hurricane Raphael, which formed on October the 12th and cruised through 
the uh, northern Leeward Islands before becoming a hurricane as it progressed north, turning extra tropical on October the 17th. Now for Hurricane Paul, which at one point really threatened the Mexican coast, but in the end wasn't really a, a strong storm and didn't quite make landfall in the end. Paul caused not too much in the way of damage. A few landslides though. Tropical Storm Maria was a storm in the Western Pacific forming on October the 14th. Didn't really move over any significant land areas and so it didn't cause any damage or fatalities. Now for Typhoon Son Tin which formed on October the 23rd and moved over the Philippines as a tropical storm causing heavy flooding in those areas killing 27 as a matter of fact uh, and then the storm intensified becoming a typhoon and then a major typhoon just before hitting Vietnam just about killing 8 there now for Hurricane Sandy, well we all know how this one happened, forming on October the 22nd, becoming a tropical storm, and then a hurricane as it struck Jamaica, and then Cuba. And then it progressed through the Bahamas as a Category 2 storm, weakening to a Category 1, barely holding on to tropical characteristics, and finally becoming extratropical shortly before striking New Jersey. Of course Sandy was, is so far, the second most costliest storm on record. Tropical Storm Tony, a very short-lived storm forming on October the 22nd, dissipating on the 25th, a 50 mile per hour storm, um, didn't affect any land areas in the grand scheme of things there. Now the first Indian Ocean storm, Cyclone Merjan, forming on October the 24th and striking Somalia on October the 25th, a very short-lived storm again, causing rains there, but much welcome rains really. Then for Cyclone Neelam, which was a storm that struck the Indian coast, uh, causing over 59 fatalities, it is now, I think it's in the 70s now, and $56 million of damage. Tropical Storm Rosa was a tropical storm in the eastern Pacific, forming on October the 30th, dissipating on November the 4th. Another short lived storm, and the last one of the eastern Pacific region. Now to Tropical Depression 25, which was a storm in the Western Pacific, initially forecast to be a tropical storm, but didn't live up to that in the end. A 30 mile per hour storm, it didn't cause much damage. And then Cyclone 3B, which formed in the North Indian Ocean on November the 17th as a tropical storm, weakening to a depression and then becoming a remnant low as it struck India, not causing much in the way of damages, if any. At the end of Hurricane Week, I'll be answering any questions that you, the viewer, may have submitted during the week. If you have a question, just comment below this video. For those of you watching these as I upload them, Part 5 will be out tomorrow. For those of you watching in the future, it should be around here somewhere.